very good morning and a warm welcome to aicog tv i am pleased to have with me none other than dr sonia malik she is a very well known senior most faculty from new delhi she is program director of south in fertility and ivf in new delhi she is a chairman of foxy infertility committee for the tenure of 2014 to 2016 She is a president of Indian Fertility Society and a past president of Indian Menopause Society. Uh, Ma'am, we are going to have a discussion with you on the infertility management in India, and I think uh, who can be better person to talk about infertility uh, if I have to talk um, from the north uh, zone? We cannot have a better person than you, I guess. So, uh, can we have uh, your uh, insights on the use of gonadotropins in IUI? Which one do you prefer, and why? Uh, I think you've asked me too many things all at all at once. But first of all, let me wish everybody a very good morning. Those of you who are at AICOG and those of you who are listening to this, not being here today with us, it's a vibrant morning, and the entire atmosphere is charged with so much of enthusiasm. And I think. Uh, the AICOG is a wonderful platform for all of you, seniors and juniors, all of us, to meet and interact with uh, with each other. This actually every year, this uh, big uh, uh, conference gives us an opportunity to network with each other and learn what we've been uh, doing over the past one year. So, with that, let me take a short uh, brief about what we've been doing at Foxy in the Infertility Committee, and uh, as you know. Uh, the infertility segment in the country is growing a lot, and all your OPDs, whether you are doing obstetrics and gynae or whether you are actually doing infertility management, they are they are growing <coughs> by leaps and bounds. We are facing couples with infertility on a. It's becoming a need for the country, although we are a very highly populated country. But nevertheless, the infertile couples are also increasing. Therefore, it is very important for all the gynecologists to have a basic understanding of infertility management. We don't want to train every inf- every gynecologist to become an infertility specialist, but yes, every person must have a basic understanding of infertility management, and that is what we've been trying to do at the uh, Indian uh, at the fertility uh, committee of the of Foxy. So with that, let us let me answer your question now as to the use of gonadotropins. I noticed that this was one area which was lacking, and uh, the gynecologists are very diffident or scared to use gonadotropins in their day-to-day practice for infertility management, and they don't want to go ahead of clomiphene citrate because of the risks and the expense of gonadotropins. But then, what is happening is that. Patients are getting cycle after cycle of clomiphene with no results. Therefore, it was very, very essential to teach the gynecologist to move ahead and to look at gonadotropins as the molecule which should be used, of course, judiciously, of course, carefully. But then, it should not. It's not that it should not be used. Therefore, in order to give them confidence on the use of gonadotropins, we started giving them workshop or symposia training. In how to use gonadotropin. So you all know that there is a selection of molecules starting from recombinant uh, FSH, and then you go on to HMG, which is of course there in so many forms. So from that selection, you have to learn how to use gonadotropins. And I think that that is something that we have been trying to achieve through these workshops and through these symposia. So um, what would you want me to tell about gonadotropins then? Yes, understand that foxy is the biggest academic platform and you have done a very uh, innovative um, um, uh, academic uh, uh, iui workshops through the last years i think we have also attended some of your iui workshops where we have educated the new doctors on the rational use of uh, gonadotropins so in uh, in gonadotropins we have urinary and the recombinant ones so how do we decide which one to go whether to go for a urinary or to a That's an excellent question, and uh, I think that uh, uh, if you take the head-to-head trials of urinary versus uh, recombinant uh, gonadotropins that have appeared in the international literature, and also some studies have come out from India, there seem to be no <coughs> results in the outcome. That means that you get an equal pregnancy rate uh, with uh, urinary as compared to the uh, the recombinant group. 
but the cost is prohibitive the hmgs are much less expensive and the and the urinary products are also less expensive as compared to the recombinant group therefore when you are doing simple procedures like iui you know where the patient doesn't want it to be very expensive you always have to think of the expense in this country because the patient doesn't have such a large paying capacity hence it is good to select the urinary uh, the urinary products as against the recombinant but there is a small subgroup of patients where you will have to select the recombinant because they already have a lot of lh in their body and when you have to give them some molecule it should be a urinary uh, a recombinant fsh because that doesn't contain lh so you are minimizing the amount of lh that you are giving to the person and such patients are those who are basically polycystic ovaries other than that polycystic ovarian syndrome all the other groups can be given urinary products and out of the urinary products also hmg because that is least expensive and then there is a special indication for hmg that is the hypogonadotrophic hypogonadic woman or the who type 1 woman you know and in that patient when you are going to stimulate her you cannot stimulate her with recombinant or urinary fsh you have to use hmg and it is a long long stimulation you shouldn't give up give up very soon go on till you find a good follicle so these are some of the messages and uh, in our workshop also in our panels today in the infertility committee workshop which most of you would have attended or are going to attend uh, i going to see through this uh, video uh, basically we are trying to say the same thing we are trying to show you or explain to you certain cases on how to select when to select and what to give so it's it's a basket that is being offered to all of us and we have to actually learn how to choose the right right molecule in order to get the best results so that is the message that i have to give to the uh, to my junior colleagues who are listening to this interview and who are watching this that you have to be aware of what is going around you have to be very very cautious of using the right uh, drug at the right time because if you are using the wrong molecule you are not going to give any benefit to your patient it's actually going to harm her so be careful be updated learn what is required and go on and uh, do your infertility management with lot of confidence don't feel scared of gonadotropin that's my message some of that uh, the urinary gonadotropins are equally effective to the recombinant yes. ones if yes. they are used judiciously in the in the right uh, in the right patients Uh, ma'am apart from uh, gonadotropins what would be those one or two tips that you would like to give to your uh, new uh, fellow gynecologist for optimizing the results of iui number 1 please never forget that learning is a constant process it's a continuous process you have to keep on attending these seminars these workshops these symposia <coughs> and also you have a huge medium in front of you in the form of the internet in the form of the web web and that you have to keep yourself updated because infertility is one branch of science which is growing every minute i won't even say every day it's every minute you find new changes because we are all discovering what is happening to our bodies hence all of you must learn this and all of you must not you not practice infertility until you are very confident training in infertility is a very important aspect of uh, training is an important aspect of everything and so also infertility i feel very sad when i see prescriptions or when i meet patients when i meet young, meet youngsters who have no knowledge of infertility and they go on and set up clinics where they are doing advanced infertility management that is sad because basically if you do not know what you are doing you have no right to do any wrong to the patient and that is my message please keep on learning please keep on attending so that you keep yourself updated and you know do better and better every day well said ma'am i think we have you have done a wonderful job through uh, by taking foxy as a platform to educate disseminate the knowledge latest knowledge on the field of uh, iui practice and to increase the success rates of the iui we thank you for your uh, wonderful um, uh, insights on this uh, usage of gonadotropins in iui and we wish you all the best for your future uh, uh, newer endeavors scientific endeavors through foxy thank you very much and i think in the future of uh, all these things is what you are doing 
the use of the uh, webs, the use of the internet and probably you are transmitting this also through the internet. I think if we are going to use more and more of that platform to engage our youngsters in, in tutorials, in seminars, in everything like that, it's going to be very <coughs> useful for them. So with that, I'll leave you all and wish you all a very good day and have a wonderful AICOG 2017. Thank you very much.